a perspective. Okay. <laughs> Jason did a great job, and really the the really the focus of his presentation was managing change on Fort Drum, and I thought that was just a great great uh, presentation. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank Cincinnati Creek uh, for entertaining us at the uh, at the uh, at the dinner. They did a great job. In your packets emails, <laughs> you'll also find a proposed draft uh, commission meeting schedule for 2023. Uh, hopefully y'all had an opportunity to take a look at that. What we try to accomplish with moving our meetings around is that all of our councils of governments are truly represented in some way or form in these meetings. So we move them around the region, which is great in our 41 communities. Um, also, it looks like we'll be meeting nine times throughout uh, 2023, and that's a good thing. Uh, any comments, any questions, any concerns about the the uh, meeting schedule as it's uh, kind of presented here today? Jana had one comment. Um, sure. You'll see that I worked in an April meeting before the local government conference. Yeah. Um, I we have because of the way we're doing the LDC this year, we we do have uh, some things going on that Wednesday afternoon, our special drone session. So perhaps we treat that meeting as it as needed or we could have it i just wanted to point out that there there is, is some stuff going on at turning stone during the afternoon so we can talk about that maybe when I get yeah, up. driving time people. driving time from uh Floyd is probably 20 minutes 20 minutes or so yeah okay. I, mean, I, I tried to find the closest place we did it in Southern Beach last year so Floyd's pretty close to well we can actually we can uh we can basically go ahead with the uh the draft and then if we need to make changes we can just do it yeah. by resolution yeah. next year Anyone have any concerns? No. no. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, the uh, proposed draft Tug Hill Commission meeting schedule for 2023? Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now, Bill, did you? I didn't yes. Hear. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Good. <clears throat> Twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four election of officers. Um, in terms of our commission bylaws um, for elections of uh, officers, um, there's a uh, definitely a process that is outlined. Unfortunately, um, we missed one of those calendar dates by not being able to. Um, have a September meeting because of lack of quorum. There's some health issues there. Um, with the uh, the missing of that uh, meeting, we moved everything into our October meeting. And um, with the consultation of uh, our council, Lee Wilbanks, at that time we decided to have a nominating committee of the whole instead of the month prior having a appointed nominating committee. So uh, at the October meeting, we had a nomination committee of the whole. And at that time, a uh, slate of officers um, were nominated. And the, the slate of officers were Jan Bogdanowitz as chair, Mike Yearden as vice chair, and Tom Boxberger as secretary. Uh, do we have any discussion around these nominations? No. Any discussion? At uh, this time, I ask for additional nominations for our 2023-2024 slate of officers. I ask again, do we have any additional nominations for our 2023-2024 officers? I ask a third time for any additional nominations on the floor for our 2023-2024 officers. Being uh, no additional nominations, I ask Secretary Boxberger to cast a ballot for the election of officers presented. So cast. Do I have a motion? Aye. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thanks. <laughs> I, like that. I thought it was my glasses for a second there. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> Thank you all for being willing to serve again. Thank you, Leona. Thanks, Leona. You know, uh, we'll be moving into a celebratory year for 2023, which is going to be our 50th anniversary and, and uh, the staff has been planning a lot of great events. Uh, I think our annual dinner, which we're gonna hold later in, in October is gonna be a, a great event. So let's kind of, as we get into the, the holiday seasons, just let's look at what the commission has done so well over the last 50 years. And we'd like to see the commission continue in the core competencies that we do. That's planning, that's community development, and that's natural resource protection. So let's uh, look forward. Uh, let's give a round of applause that we made it 50 yeah. years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and let's look forward to our 50th uh, year and a celebration. It, uh, that will definitely be a, uh, a great year and a great celebration here. Uh, with that, let's turn it over to Katie for the executive director report. Thanks, Dan. Um, you already mentioned uh, our newest uh, staff member, Gabriel Yearn, started on November 10th, and we're really happy to have him on board. Uh, we are putting a pause on our planner search, so we have a, another vacancy with Elena's uh, departure. Um, we've been advertising that for two or three months now, and to normal places. Um, we had a few resumes, we did a few interviews, didn't quite find the fit that we're looking for at this point in time. So we're gonna pause for a few months and re-advertise in the spring, like around March, and see if we can um, attract some additional candidates for that position. Um, right now, there is a lot of planning positions open and not a lot of planners to, to pick from. A lot of our partner agencies are having the same problem. Jefferson County had some vacancies for a while. We hear about it. Oswego County, actually, we were on a call with Dave Turner not too, like a week or two ago, and he said that uh, he had someone all uh, lined up for a job, and last minute, he the person got scooped right by someone in Rochester. So um, it's just a really tight uh, job market for planners right now. But we're in good shape with Matt and Matthew. I We call them Matt and Matthew just to try to like differentiate, but um, the two Matts have got it, got it under control for now, and uh, we'll, we'll keep moving forward on that in the spring. And the thought process in the spring is going to bring what? Just a well, new crop of? a new crop of potentially, you know, we, we advertised it as a planner slash senior planner, so we were kind of giving ourselves really a lot of latitude. We would prefer a senior planner, so we had someone that Matt wouldn't have to do quite so much training with, but I'm not sure that's confident that's going to happen. Right. So we've had such good luck with Matthew being kind of fresh out of college and taking taking it right off that that might be what we end up doing in this coming spring. So we're thinking of whole another round of graduates in the spring. And we're going to ask Matthew if he has any any lead <laughs> with any of his uh, former former student colleagues. So and, uh, from a Department of State standpoint, we shouldn't have any problems with keeping those open, I don't open think positions. So. Um, okay, um, I mean, we'll keep an eye on when the draft budget for 23-24 comes out, make sure we still have all of our slots there. Um, it's actually been very um, simple lately to get um, paperwork through. So I want to I want to take advantage of that when, <laughs> when it's there. I, I don't anticipate anything changing, um, but you just never know. Right. I've been keeping them uh, in the loop, so uh, we'll see what happens. And I know, speaking of DOS, they just actually brought on a few people too. Um, they've got some new people going through their training program, so uh, it seems like everybody's been able to hire, which is which is a good thing. In talking with the uh, folks from the cannabis department, uh, they've just brought on 126 people. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> So the floodgates are still open. Okay. <laughs> you can only imagine trying to train 186 people. That's right. So on that note, the LGC registration mailing you have, we are having the Office of Cannabis Management uh, uh, present again this year because we reached out and said, well, do you think you have new stuff to say? Oh, yeah, we've got new stuff. There's a lot going on with that. So you'll all see that you have... Um, 
one of our registration flyers printed out in front of your spot. Um, these went to the printer, I think, last week. So they should be in the mail to all our bar local government officials this week or next. Um, working with Coughlin, this has been a real group effort at the office. Um, our, our LGC committee is Jen and Felicia, Gwen, Carla, Angie, and myself and also tapping into all of our staff for ideas and speakers and topics that are pertinent. Um, so there's a lot in this and we're hoping that we've displayed it in a way that people will understand what we're doing. Um, but we've got the full regular LGC sessions here, the Thursday and the grid, and those are the normal. And then on the back, we talk about the new this year, Wednesday afternoon session that's gonna focus on drones. And we are working with the Genesis group. They have a drone education program to put together that afternoon of activities and sessions. Um, it's really going to be a combination. The drone part will be a combination of lecture and hands-on. They're going to have mini drones. There's going to be a couple of rooms to do some playing with them, crashing them, doing obstacle courses with them. So it's That's not just, dangerous. It's not just going to be talking at you for three hours about drones. It's going to be actually letting people experience well, what it can do. Fun. Um, and we are hopeful where, that- Where's the uh, cannabis? Uh, I, there's one here that for, it says potluck. Is that it? <laughs> it is to be an update on the implementation. Oh, okay. Potluck. Potluck. Um, be a good name. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, and uh, we're, we're hopeful that this will be attractive to people. Uh, we're still offering the two ways to register online with a credit card in paper, with paper, with a check. Um, please get, if you want a hotel, let Felicia know. I know she sent an email out last week to everybody for hotel rooms. We did get state rate this year. Um, so that was a good thing. Um, we're not in the tower with the rooms. We're in something else right there. It's right still in within the, the facility, but it's just a, a little different spot. Um, yeah, so we're really looking forward to it. And also keep in mind the reception is Wednesday night. It's not Thursday night at the end of the day. It's Wednesday night after the drones before um, full day of the LGC. We kind of switched that around too. So take a close look at this. Um, so there'll be no dinner, it'll be a reception then? Or? Yeah, Wednesday it'll be hors d'oeuvres and a cash bar. I think that would work well. Yeah, and we're getting away from the reception at the end of the day when everyone's going to be driving home, yeah. you know, we're trying to just be a little more cognizant of that sort of thing too. Um, our, we've tried to hold the line a little bit with our um, fees. So you'll see on the second page, the, the, the early fees by March 3rd, um, the Wednesday session 75, the full day Thursday sessions 85. We were at 75 for the full day last year. We, re, we increased a, a small amount, but we didn't, we didn't want to go too far and then turn people off. We've been really pushing to get um, additional sponsorships from businesses this year. And we've had pretty good luck so far with attracting some new businesses to come and be silver, you know, yeah. gold, platinum sponsors, because we've got to make up the income some way. If you remember, we were in the hole last year on this and we, we really need to be breaking even. So right. let's keep our fingers crossed. Food costs have went up significantly, and we actually don't even have final food numbers from Turning Stone. They gave us their best guess that they were going up between 20 and 30 percent from wow. last year. So we're we're kind of shooting in the dark a little bit with some educated guesses on, on the budget and money. So just full full disclosure, we're doing our best. But if we had went to $100 for the regular the full day, I was worried that that would be too much for municipalities. Yeah. So we're at 85. Any questions? Um, as Jan mentioned, 50th anniversary, uh, we are starting those uh, celebrations now. Um, I do have the Secretary of State um, hopefully confirmed for our speaker for the annual dinner in October it is on his calendar. Um, so hopefully nothing changes between now and then, but we're on there early and he would be great to have. We are kicking off the poster contest that we discussed uh, at the last meeting. We have uh, a copy of the poster <laughs> flyer in your packet. Uh, Taylor sent this out to all the schools in the region on Friday. This is to try to generate some youth involvement in Tug Hill. And this winning poster will go on the front of the LGC brochure. So give them a lot of, um, you know, 
space to be recognized and, and we'll probably invite them to our annual dinner and do a couple of other things to recognize. So if you know anybody in the schools, this is geared towards high school students. Um, so please get that word out. I was hoping to have uh, Tug Hill Roasters coffee for us today, but it's not quite done. We've been working with them as well on a kind of a 50th anniversary label for the for the coffee that they make since uh, they've done that for a lot of organizations. They've done it for Tug Hill Tomorrow Land Trust in the past to like kind of recognize special things. So we have um, generated a little nice label with some wording. Taylor did the graphics. So we, we wrote some, um, some wordage up and that should be out anytime. Um, and that'll be a special run coffee that celebrates the 50th anniversary. I'll let everybody know when it's in the store. We're gonna buy those for our speaker gifts for the LGC. Um, we're not making any money on this. It's really purely just to try to get the word out to the general public about us and our 50th anniversary. Um, what else do I have? I, that's basically it for now. So um, we're starting, and the and we're starting to use the logo. The logo is on the conference, or is on this poster. Um, our 50th anniversary logo. We'll put that on the letterhead, and um, we're putting out our email signatures and stuff. Just again, just a little something to celebrate the 50th anniversary. And um, in 2023, another big thing we have going on is our local leader survey. Believe it or not, it's been five years since we've surveyed our local leaders. And, re and remember, we have to do that every five years as part of our legislation. Um, so we are starting to think about that and gear up. Um, as far as the timing goes, I'm wondering um, if we might be better off waiting till after the LGC to, to get it out, wait till end of the April, beginning of May. Um, we'll meet soon after the new year to figure out timing and process. So we really, we just want that to probably for our October meeting. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll want the results. Um, I have to look back five years ago what the timing was. We report those to the governor and the legislature. And I think, yeah. It's going to be for the election then. Good, yeah, it would be in the fall. Yeah. Um, and remember, we get a lot of um, answer. We get a very high response rate to that. Um, Jean was the one in charge of it last time we did that. It was close to 60%, I want to remember. Um, I pulled the file to remember how we did it, and so um, well, we were using uh, Snap then. Snap then, so it'll be a different process now. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. We're we're talking about Google surveys and some print surveys as well. Um, so that'll be uh, a a new thing to try it in a different method. But I I have confidence that we'll get good good response rate again. Um, in your packets too are updated assembly, senate, and congressional maps. Um, we had an election, as everyone knows, and we have new some new old some old representatives, some new representatives, and um, some people that have just switched uh, from assembly to senate. Uh, so take a look at this. We do have one outstanding um, state senate race that has not been decided yet. The fiftieth, which is in the southwest corner of the region, the Hastings, West Monroe, Constantia area, that's uh, being hand counted still. And uh, I haven't heard any final determination on that one yet. But we do have a uh, new Senator, Senator Walzik in the 49th, which is, a, you know, all these boundaries have changed, but it's generally what Richie used to have with some changes. We still have Senator Griffo in Oneida County now. He has lost Lewis County. Lewis County is all Walzik's. Um, we have now five assembly districts. We had, I think we had four before me. We had five, but there's a, a this shifted. We've got um, a new assemblyman, Scott Gray in Watertown. We still have Will Barkley and um, Oswego and a little bit of Jefferson. Um, we still have Ken Blankenbush, uh, who has probably two thirds of the region. If you look at the 117, um, Bob Smullen has a little bit and uh, Marion Buntshawn has, has Floyd. So. We'll be reaching out and doing meetings with them very shortly too. Um, and then we have our congress congressional districts. We've got three. We've got Claudia Tenney in the 24th, um, Elise Stefanik in the 21st, and uh, Brandon Williams in the 22nd. And that's someone I do not know at all. So we need to find some context with uh, that individual. So just, you know, it's the constantly changing uh, people that we need to keep informed of what the commission does uh, and aware of um, all that we have to offer. Um, with that, I think I pretty much that's enough for me because I know we have uh, Joel here to do a presentation and I don't want to take up any more time. Did you want to just uh, give a quick overview of your, your conference in Phoenix? My, my trip to Phoenix was good. Um, 
it, it's a beautiful city. Unfortunately, I got sick when I got out there. So I was struggling to go to the sessions. I did go to all my sessions, but then I would go back to the hotel room and just kind of crash. <laughs> I had some kind of stomach thing going on. Um, it was a good conference. I, uh, I did learn a lot. Uh, there's a lot of talk about climate and climate resiliency. There was a lot, the army just adopted a new climate strategy and they're all about how to implement it and the other armed services as well. Um, Fort Drum seems to be being very proactive, came back and talked to some of the folks out on post and they're already doing a lot of things I was hearing being talked about in Phoenix. Um, there's things about microgrids using renewable energy. They're actually just starting a look at the Black River as a hydro source. They've got Army Corps doing um, some initial analysis of that since it's right you know, adjacent to post. They're also looking at solar, um, which could benefit some other projects we're involved with. Um, so yeah, it was a very good, there was a, a lot of people there. It was unfortunate. I was the only person from Fort Drum, nobody from Garrison came. And usually there's someone from Garrison at these things as well as the civilian community. Um, I did meet uh, some folks from the Niagara Reserve. That was the other New York people that were there. But it's, you know, when you look at our, our forces, there's a lot from the South and there's a lot from the Southwest. So it was really a lot of that was kind of an issues that they've got going on overshadowed more of the Northeast sort of thing. But it was it was very good to get your head around a lot of the issues and, and, and to meet some people. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. With that, uh... Bill Bartlett, Supervisor, I guess you have a presentation for us. You guys might have to turn around because I think he's going to be back that way. We have a backup. Oh, we have a backup then. Watch out. Turn all those lights back there. Huh? Proved all my critics wrong, didn't I? Thank you all for coming and thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, Tom asked me about a month ago if I would uh, put on a small presentation here, and I said, well, Kind of reluctant because I'm not used to doing these a lot uh, with a group this size. I've got 20 handouts here. I don't know if there's going to be enough, but if we could have those yep. passed out, I would appreciate it very Absolutely. much. That's kind of like a brief overview of what I'm going to show you today. <laughs> we are uh, very proud uh, in the town of Watertown. I'm proud of our planning board. I'm proud, very proud of our town council and our zoning board of appeals. We seem to be the only town that grows a lot in this region. Uh, with the new housing and development, we had to uh, go through a redistricting at the county legislative level, level because of new housing development, people moving into the town of Watertown, and our population increased, so they had to reshuffle everybody. So instead of having just one legislative representative at the county level, now we have two. So at least I'm, I'm, I'm almost guaranteed of at least one vote out of the two. But, uh, thank you again for coming today, and I'll try to be brief. We've got uh, a number of uh, things I'd like to go over with, with you. Some of the development and growth that we're having in the town. This year, starting in the spring, we're going to be commencing on well over $110 million worth of projects. Wow. With $5.2 million going into the Northeast Water District, which services Outer State Street and Upstate Street Hill. We have water district improvements and sewer district improvements on Arsenal Street that totals around five million. We've got the Northland Estates trailer park down the road here on Route 11. They've had a lot of water issues, and the state health department has provided them and us with a consent order to remedy the situation of the uh, the poor infrastructure that breaks in the spring and the water quality they have. So we got another ten million dollars that's being invested in that project. The pride and joy of our project list is our event center. I don't know if any of you have heard of it or not, but we have been successful in uh, attracting private sector investors uh, to a total of $55 million in an $80 million project. We will be going to the state uh, for some assistance. Let me see if I can make this up.
you know, if anybody can read that, it's a kind of a worry on our mind. Let me go this way. Let me, excuse me, let me uh, sit down and let me just think, see if I can get through this without too much confusion. The uh, Town of Watertown Council, several years ago, commissioned a group from New York City, Venue Strategies. Their office, main office is on Park Avenue in New York. They're one of the best in the country at doing market analysis, feasibility studies, and community development projects. What we have uh, discovered through their efforts over the last three years, uh, there's a market here that ranges that, that stretches within a two and a half, three hour drive to Watertown. That market uh, starts north of Ottawa, it goes south of Syracuse, and as far east as Plattsburgh, and west as Rochester. There's a whole central part of the state of New York that is not serviced by any multi purpose event center. Our event center is 520,000 square feet in the middle of the space. And it's, uh, it consists of the, uh, the 520,000 square foot multi-use indoor facility that provides state-of-the-art space for a complete range of sports, recreation, entertainment, and special events, servicing the thousand hour North Country region and Southern Ontario, Canada. Uh, the projected start date and opening date of this project is January of 24. The location is on the Arsenal Street Road in the town of Watertown, which is just past BOCES on Route 3. Uh, we've uh, acquired 56 acres of property in a new Jefferson County Agricultural Park that is going to be servicing the project that will be built on and operated by the management group, the investors, the Oakview group, and MS2 Sports. Mike Sherman Sports is the tip of the spear for the investors. Uh, Mike Sherman is, you might know that, remember the name. He's the former head coach and, and general manager of the Green Bay Packers and the Miami Dolphins. He has partnered up with the Oakview group, which is the world's largest purveyor of sports and entertainment facilities. In markets like we have we have uh, discovered, uh, this being a B market in this area, they have primarily operated within the A markets, which would be New York City, uh, Cleveland, uh, Seattle, all the larger cities in the country. They have currently ten billion dollars in ongoing construction projects. Two of the latest projects that they just completed were for the Seattle Kraken, the new home for the Seattle Kraken professional hockey team, and uh, the UBS Arena and Belmont, New York, which is the new home for the New York Islanders. One of the uh, things that uh, attracted them was the, the market that was discovered here. And we had to verify through a, a third party uh, economic impact group, the EKG group, or excuse me, EKA group out of uh, Buffalo. Uh, they confirmed that the, there was enough market here and, and the project of this size was sustainable. And would be successful. Uh, we shopped the market, this whole plan that was put together over a period of three years and involved 240 pages of the material. I'm not going to burden you with that. Uh, I, I shrunk it down to 45 pages and then just over the weekend I, sh I shrunk it down even further to give you a general idea of what we're doing. Because I, I know attention spans the fine details are, are very short, especially if you have to do a lot of reading. Uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the uh, good events that happened to us was that after we completed the study and uh, the market analysis, we shopped this project to see if we could find private sector investors. And the first group that we shopped it to was Mike Sherman Sports and the Oakview group. Mike Sherman Sports, as you know, as I mentioned before, Mike Sherman's a former coach, professional football coach. Uh, he's retired from that field, although he does get called back to work from time to time with his son in law, who is the Head coach of the, of the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, he gets called in to help his son in law out from time to time when they get into trouble with going the front line or something uh, in the backfield. But uh, they really like the idea of this project and they were the first to sign on board because they are moving into what they call B market areas. Uh, they uh, have primarily have been operating in A market areas. Now they want to come in and, and, and get a foothold in the B market areas. Uh, that means uh, populations that places that aren't actually population centers, 
So if you look at the radius of the, and Watertown being the center location of this new market area, we've got 4.2 million people that live within a two and a half hour drive from Watertown. And why do we pick the location that we, where we have the land, the property? We, we chose that because it is of its proximity to Route 81, the airport, uh, shopping, and hotels. Uh, they were the managing partners are very excited to get started. They would like to start in uh, January with the uh, groundbreaking ceremonies and be open uh, January of 24. It takes them approximately uh, 10 weeks to build this structure. Wow. The uh, facilities would include uh, two indoor turf fields, eight basketball courts, 16 volleyball courts, a 220-meter bank hydraulic track. Nowadays, it's, it's changed a lot since I was in high school and ran track. We used to run on cinders on a flat ground around the football field. Now, to, to, for Division One and, and indoor track and field, you have to have the tracks elevated so the corners have to be hydraulically come up out of the, out of the concrete. And then when it's not in use, it's the, the, the track. Uh, the 220 bank hydraulic track will, will allow us to have a division one competition here. That's all the big colleges. Uh, it includes two NHL ice sheets, 16 wrestling stations, eight pitching and batting cages uh, for baseball, softball, and gymnastics, dance area. Uh, it also provides us with 265,000 square feet of flexible clear span space for trade shows, conferences, and meetings. There's no facility like that in the North Country region. This facility is in itself will make us a true year round destination. Uh, currently, we have the Thousand Islands, which everybody likes to enjoy in the summer months, but when September 1st rolls around, the sidewalks roll up. And it's, it's very slow here. The hotels are sucker a lot through the winter months. This will certainly uh, provide additional uses of hotels. I'll get to the, to the hotel section in just a second here. The facility itself, in addition, will create, uh, will have 9,000 seats for concert shows, sports competitions, special events, with a uh, special multimedia suite uh, for all the multimedia that's attached to Division I high school and, and uh, scholastic sporting events. Uh, fitness, wellness programs, and sports uh, performance space will be provided along with daycare, sports bar, and restaurant. Uh, and a cafe, three fully lighted outdoor turf fields. Actually, there's five on the, on the, on the deck now that would be being considered. There are five uh, outdoor lighted turf fields for competition play, camps, clinics, and tournaments. Uh, it'll be the new home for the Seattle Seahawks, excuse me, the Seahawks Hockey Club and the Liverpool Brandon Soccer Academy, uh, the Nancy Kerrigan Figure Skating. Uh, curriculum and MS2 sports junior lacrosse and hopefully uh, it'll provide access to additional fields for the Watertown Red and Black. Uh, one of the things that uh, Coach Sherman has been involved in since he left being pro coach is youth sports. He lives currently resides on Cape Cod. He has a league that he owns now that goes from Cape Cod up into Maine as far as hockey, junior junior hockey and, uh, and hockey. Uh, the uh, major part of their program, their model, is not to take away from local fields and athletic venues. We do not do that. They do not cannibalize anything. Matter of fact, they come in and they are. They provide the, 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 uh, provide the an enhancement for all the local, uh, these fairgrounds arena, the soccer and lacrosse fields, the football fields at the fairgrounds, all, all the turf fields that you have at the high schools and junior highs. One of the things that, you've, that you would note if you've ever been to any of the uh, large scale uh, hockey, excuse me, lacrosse tournaments they have outside of Albany, uh, they have 15 fields going all at one time. And we can certainly make the city's fields busy during the tournament time. And uh, a lot of their, a lot of their program is involved around uh, tournament play uh, all the way from junior high in all sports up through Division One college. Currently, they are working on. They have signed up with with the uh, colleges: uh, St. Lawrence University, Potsdam, Canton, Ithaca. A number of colleges. They are going to be forming a a, a new tournament called the Thousand Islands International 
tournament. It'll involve Canadian teams from Division One colleges in Canada. They will be accessing and using this facility as well uh, during the course of the year. One, the uh, benefit is great to all the local people here. Uh, and the good thing about it is there's no best investment of local tax dollars. There's nothing going on here in anybody's tax bill to pay for this project. It's all privately funded with some assistance from the state. Uh, 220 construction jobs will be started in the, in the spring uh, and $207 million in short-term construction payroll. Uh, the event center will be used. 250 event days are scheduled now and 305,000 visitors will come to the center annually. That's 15 times the population of the city of Watertown. That's new people coming to the area. Of those, 93,500 additional overnight stays in hotels will be required. We don't have enough hotel rooms. Uh, we're working now with people uh, for the, uh, the site locators for all the, flat, uh, the hotel flags. Uh, we're looking at citing five new additional hotels because of this project. And then the hotels they're looking at, the sites they're looking at are in, you know, just north of in Alex Bay uh, to uh, down in uh, Leader. Uh, Barclays town of Alaska, south of Alaska. So the, the, it has a huge far ranging uh, a scope of operation and, and people coming to the area is going to be a, a, a wonderful boom to the area and truly make this a year round destination. Now uh, they're looking to create 38 full time jobs with the, at, with the work at the center and there are over 100 jobs that are associated with ancill ancillary jobs as far as uh, uh, chartering. Uh, transportation charters, uh, busing from, inter that, from the inner city out and busing from other areas. Uh, hotels and restaurants will increase their staff uh, because of the increase in, in the, the business and the tourism related dollars. A lot of people don't realize that the tourism sports industry, they call sports tourism, uh, takes advantage of clinics that Coach Sherman and his group put on they uh, are normally a week in length. They bring in people like Brett Favre, quarterback, uh, uh, hockey players that are professionals that, that are in the off season. They'll have uh, skating from Nancy Kerrigan Skating uh, Academy. They will be giving clinics. That is going to call for an additional 45 units of housing to house people and students in uh, for the week that they're here. Uh, parents, we hope, and I'm, I'm sure they will do some traveling while they're in the area, visit the Thousand Islands, and spend their money around the city of Watertown in the in the uh, the uh, retail commercial district that is out on Arsenal Street. The uh, project itself, as I said, is 500 and provides 550,000 square feet of space, indoor covered space, and it can be used year round. The uh, some of the renderings I have here, some of these have been changed. Uh, you've got some in your packet that I, that I handed out as well. Um, let me do this. Let me move down to the, the easel here. I can get a, give you a better picture, I think, in that direction. This is the layout of the project. The property is controlled by the Dallas Mountain Local Development Corporation. That's an LDC that we set up two years ago. It was established by the town council. And we've been operating in the last two years with the, with the various uh, people on our development team. The development team is also venue strategies out of New York. The uh, principals, investors, which is the Oakview Group, uh, and Mike Sherman Sports. We've had a, a, a lot of success in, in, in luring, getting attention brought to this in, in, in B market areas. And certainly this meeting today with you folks, uh, we hope will stir the pot a little further and get people interested. The proposed facility is split, as you see here. If these two buildings were combined, you'd have a building that's 480 feet deep by 990 feet long. Unfortunately, the main main area of property that we control at this point is only 900 feet wide. Well, so we are looking at we're going to be looking at annexing some parcels, 15 acres 
for the isolated ice component into the town water dump to the town house field. Uh, you see the, the, the soccer and the cross fields here. Indoors, there's a proposed indoor football field. And all the other amenities that I drew you over there. Uh, track and field. Mezzanine here in the second place is, is two thirds of the handicapped accessible with elevators because you have the second floor where the restaurant is, uh, sports bars, uh, pro shops, and all that will be on the bottom. Uh, locker rooms underneath the seating. Uh, there's plenty of seating. As I said, for concerts alone, we can seat 9,000. We're working closely with, uh, with Live Nation, who, you know, as you might be aware, they do all the booking for Syracuse, the state fair. All the acts that come from the new amphitheater down there, they are heavily involved with this. They will be taking handling all the booking of the non sports events that go on at the center. They have uh, even offered to pony up some money to help with the project. The, the project construction team uh, is uh, La Chase Construction out of Rochester. They have worked with Mike Sherman Sports and the Old New Group on several projects, including the USB Arena. In Belmont, uh, they are going to be contributing to five million to build this. So they know that they have a lot of faith in it. If, any, if, a, if a contractor wants to invest five million of his own money to get to to build it, build a facility, you know that it's got to be a pretty, pretty uh, healthy proposition to look at. Some of the uh, Kind of, you know, some of the sports bars and the facilities in, in the interior. We have a unique roofing system on this. It's similar to the one they put on, just put on the dome in Syracuse. Uh, so there's a fabric structure, a tensile steel. Uh, actually, and there's some of the similar, similar type that uh, encloses the, the Salmon Run Mall here in Watertown. That's lasted for 40 years. So we have confidence in the booking system. It's all difficult to, to put together when you're in the design phase of a project like this. Um, Mike Sherman Sports has, at this time, they are starting the construction drawings. They've already been through the schematic drawings, and they've invested an additional 500000 to pay for the cost of that. So basically, our LDC has spent little money, very little. It's, uh, and, that's, and that's good because we don't have a lot. <laughs> But we've uh, so, so far we've uh, been sitting, we've uh, added on a few a few uh, people to assist in our endeavor with the state. We have a we have a governmental affairs consultant that works with us and the people in New York State that have various departments, Empire State Development and such, <clears throat> or some of the funding from the state level can, can go through. We've uh, been very successful there. Maybe we've got a Zoom conference Thursday. With the new director of Empire State Development, he's statewide, uh, and we're going to be bringing this project. The people in New York that normally do these presentations will be doing that one, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I've got a face for radio, and I work better in the dark. <laughs> but we've, uh, we're, we're very excited about the very excited about the project and the enormous benefit it's going to be because instead of rolling the sidewalks up. Every every fall, every September, we're going to have an opportunity to bring people here year round for the activities. Uh, like I said, there's nowhere in this market area in New York State or in Southern Canada that has a facility of this size. Uh, if you imagine just some of the, the huge uh, trade shows that can go on there, you can get into regional and national events, statewide events, where now we are very limited to using an ice rink in the city, uh, which is undersized. And it's, uh, this is going to be a, a huge economic boom, we believe, to the area. Uh, the city gets sales tax revenue out of this. Uh, they get bed tax increase in bed tax revenue. And it's no investment. No, we didn't ask the city for one dime. I have letters of support, a uh, resolution of support from the city council. We did get that through <laughs> without too much fuss. Uh, which was, that was a unique situation. But we have letters of support we've got from our Congresswoman Roman Stefanik. Um, we've, we've had discussions with Senator Schumer and Gillibrand, 
So we're working the, the whole political aisle, both sides of the aisle, because this is not a Democrat project. This is not a Republican project. This is a, a, a regional project that's going to benefit everybody. Uh, Senator Schumer's and Senator Jill Green are aware of the project. They are in favor of it. So we hope to utilize them. And well, I've got to meet with uh, the representatives from uh, Congresswoman Tenney's office within the next two weeks to bring her up to date on where we are with it in hopes that we can get some federal funding that might offset any decrease in federally anticipated state funding. Uh, what I gave you shows that we're looking for a $30 million ask from the state that has been changed. That is only one financing option that was available to the group investors. They have about six different financing plans. Uh, it's been kind of moving around because of the bond rates and inflation. Uh, the supply chain issues have slowed us down. Uh, as you know, everybody lost two years basically with COVID. And now we're at the, reaching the point where we're just starting to gear up again in hopes that the market, bond market changes and the bond, start, bond rates start coming down. The JCIDA and JCGADC support the project. The, the investors will be looking for a pilot agreement on the project uh, that would cut them down to a 50% 50, 50 tax liability. One of the other good reasons that this situated here in the town of Lockdown. There's no local property tax. All the malls, nobody pays any property tax. Uh, we're one of six townships in the state of New York. And it's, it's taken a lot of hard work for a lot of years and some good work with the planning board and, and, and the zoning board of appeals and the town council to bring projects together, find buyers like we have for this. And it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to work with Tom and his group and the zoning board of appeals. And uh, it certainly is a pleasure to bring this to your attention today. I apologize. It's not, it's kind of rambling, hit and miss here and there. So it's hard to remember 250 pages worth of information. <laughs> down after what I have. Yeah. and have any kind of order to it. So most of the time it's just, it's just ramble. <laughs> if you have any questions, I sure, I surely uh, appreciate some. And I certainly will answer any of the rest of my abilities. Wait, Supervisor, I got a couple of questions here. Uh, I'm assuming out of the $15 million, that's going to be the uh, PE portion. The private development is, is totals fifty-five million altogether. Fifty-five million. Where's the, what's the fifteen million dollars from? That that's that's cash, and then there's the uh, remaining. Uh, there's a bond number of bond number of dollars associated with the with the bonding that they are responsible for. Okay, so the the uh, thirty million uh, taxable bond issue. Who's going to be the issuer of that? You know, that'll that'll be the JCIDA. That'll be JC. Okay, and the LLC that you incorporated uh, through the. The town board will that be a taxable organization or non-taxable? That's a five hundred one c three tax. It's not taxable. Okay. It's, it took us a couple of years to get that establishment some hard block political battles, but we finally did get it, and it's working well. And we've been successful in worrying this project with little to zero investment. And last, okay, last question, Mike uh, Sherman Sports and LaChase, what's their investment in this? LaChase is the contractor. Uh, they are looking at contributing to $5 million. Okay. That's the number that I've been given. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, if you could, if you get a minute, I suggest you might want to Google the Oakview Group OVG facilities. You'll give us a complete rundown. Our gentleman by the name of Hank Abate is the founder of that. He's the managing director of it. Easter. Hank started out years ago back in the 70s as the manager of rock bands, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Tony Mitchell, REO Speedwagon, uh, Journey. He had a number of them. He made so much money, he went out and started this development corporation that develops facilities like this. There's another facility like this that's being built similar to this in Spring, Springfield, Massachusetts. And there's another one being built in Watertown, South Dakota. <laughs> So we've, uh, they're, they're catching on and they're moving as quick as they can because they want to capitalize on the new market areas. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk about your conference space and um, how many different rooms can happen out of your, uh, if there's a huge conference space, maybe air wall? Yeah, they, they, usually, they use pipe and rope and drape. They can, and they can, or slider walls is, is like this, in this building here. You can, you can set them up for any size. Hmm. Eight rooms, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. Yeah. Is there dining facilities? Uh, there will be a sports bar and a full service restaurant there. Hmm. Capable of catering or maybe not? Uh, I I don't I can't really say because I'm not responsible for their programming. 
Uh, that's up to the investors, but I'm sure there'll be some occasions there where they'll allow catering. What we're doing, we've teamed up with we're teaming up with Jefferson Community College to take advantage of some of their sports curriculum, uh, <clears throat> sports events and activities curriculum there, uh, sports management, uh, facility management, and things of that nature. They will be using the center, using the facility. Uh, we've teamed up with, with uh, Bolsies as another partner in this. Bolsies is going to be expanding their uh, culinary curriculum, and the restaurant will be staffed by trainees from Bolsies, hmm. along with professional people that, that operate in restaurants. But it's uh, hmm. it's a win for everybody, including the local college and the and, and Bolsies, because we're putting their students to work. Uh, one of the first projects we are going to spring is a new parking area that's on Bolsey's property. We have a ground lease from Bolsey's for right now it stands at eight acres for additional uh, overflow parking. Uh, the students are going to be utilizing all of their expertise on the heavy equipment operators uh, that, that are trained at, at Bolsey's. And so we're going to let the students build the parking lot. So that's, that's a good hands on experience for them. A lot of partners in this, and a lot of moving parts all the time. And it's, uh, it, it changes day to day with uh, financing options, so we don't stick to that one that's in particular in your in your hand. Because I think that one's going to buy it right now because of the, the bond rates. We hope to get to the governor's office here in the next couple of months. Now that we're through the election, we've been hampered a little bit by COVID for a couple of years. Uh, it seems like every roadblock has been thrown out and has run out and placed in front of us. Uh, we've had uh, difficulties with the uh, Congressional districting, assembly redistricting. <laughs> the governor was deposed, a new governor, new staff. Uh, so we've uh, it's kept us busy throwing out paperwork and and, uh, and and bringing it to everybody's attention. And hopefully, with the uh, now that the governor's in for four years, things will stabilize a little bit, and uh, we'll be able to get to see her and her staff. Uh, the uh, gentleman that we are going to be having a Zoom conference with Thursday. As I said, he's the statewide director for Empire State Development. He also sits on the round table the governor has. There's five people that are her closest that make a lot of decisions. He's one of those five. So we'll have it, we'll have somebody there. Hopefully they'll be bidding our proposition into the governor's office for some state help. It's not unusual that you ask for $30 million. Um, there's a gentleman, his name is Eastman, who just shepherded the uh, state investment of 600 and some million dollars for the new Buffalo Bills mm -hmm. Stadium. He got that done. He's now on board with this project, wants to help us get some state funding. Uh, another group that's helping us, uh, in addition to the college, mostly is uh, Park Strategies. I don't know yes. them. They were started by uh, Senator Pothole, Al D'Amato. Mm -hmm. yeah. Al. <laughs> This group does a lot of good work there. They know all the intricacies of the state government, which levels you got to go to and who to talk to. So we have an in there with him as well. A lot of this. But uh, we're uh, heavily represented. We've got a great development team. And uh, we can't wait till spring comes when the ground gets broken on this. And uh, hopefully I'll have coach you know, here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, along with people from California, I had them all scheduled to be here. Uh, a month ago, but one of them fell ill and had to cancel all the reservations and press interviews mm -hmm. that he had set up for them four hours before they're supposed to arrive. <laughs> so it uh, set us back a little bit there, but we're used to roadblocks now. And, uh, Joel, one last question. When do you feel confident that the January 2024 date is, like, when will you know that if you're staying on schedule or? That, 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 that can still be, the, the, that's the targeted date still. Okay. Even with it, as I said, it only takes ten weeks to construct the. the yeah, that's fast. Yeah, really the fast. walls, the walls are fifty feet tall. Yeah, and there's the outside walls are fifty feet. Well, they are. It's yeah. called tilt-up construction. They pour the forms on the floor of the building. They pour the person pour the whole floor of the facility, and let that uh, pure. Then they form the walls on, the, on that, and then stand them up with a crane, and then they just go right down the line. Um, the longest part I said it would take through all the electrical sockets and the wiring and all that. That's the most difficult part, but that's all programmed into the walls when they're constructed. So it's a unique setup. 
a lot of a lot of shopping centers are done that way now. You go in the southwest, a lot of the areas are done that way. Crane companies. It takes a big, big crane to do that, but uh, it's it's a lot quicker and actually saves you quite a bit of money. But the eighty million dollar cost so far is uh, that's inclusive of some inflation that we've had. Uh, hopefully, the inflation rates will come down a little bit, and uh, interest rates will come down as well. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for your time. I, I apologize for the presentation. As I said, I have a face for radio and I'm better in the dark. Thanks. <laughs> I asked for it. Leona didn't probably expect to be put her. Here's your jacket. Oh, okay. Jesus. So, all the members should have um, Thank you. the summer night financial report as well as some notes in your packet. And everything is. Going according to plan, there's no nothing. I don't think um, surprising here. We're on track for salary expenditures right now at 66 percent of our budget, and we're almost 75 uh, percent of the way through the year fiscal year. So that's good. Um, under the contractual, we're still uh, waiting for uh, an update on the car situation. We have it ordered. It's just a, a waiting game now. So we're hoping that comes through before March 31st. So it'll all happen in this budget year because we have it budgeted and uh, would be right, really nice to have that. We have surplus the, up the old RAV at this point. It's sitting up at DOT's facility north of the city waiting to be uh, auctioned off. Um, so we're down to one vehicle right now. We're just using the Fusion and then personal mileage beyond that. Um, we also have uh, ordered a new copier that's also waiting. Um, so there's lots of just uh, shortages and it takes time to get things in, in play. Um, everything else, I mean, we're a little over on a few of our items, IT, which we've talked about in the past. We've switched to a new IT company. So that's that's starting to, I feel like, even out. We've got over the the big hump with with changing over the system. So hopefully that'll continue. Um, I'm happy to try to answer any questions. And please, it's here too. If you have any questions, I just uh, our, our weekly um, Hill Times. Do you know the subscription it's a, with the number of people? Yeah. Um, I should know that because I sent it out for <laughs> last time, but I would say we are about 700. Would you say, Gwen, for more than that? 750, 800? How many would you say, Gwen? <laughs> I would say about 1,200. For Tug Hill Times? Correct. Right. This, I guess this is a question for the uh, the circuit riders. You know, we uh, we have new council people coming in every day. We have new planning board members coming across the, the 41 communities that we service. Are we kind of, you know, I think that that's an inexpensive way to get our message out. Just curious, are we talking that up, saying, hey, okay, you're a new council person. Give me your email address. We'd like to send you this on a weekly basis. I think that's important. I'd like to see that thing up 5,000 if we could. I mean, it's, it's not going to cost us a dime. No. <laughs> You know, that's a great way to get our message out. I'm just, I'm wondering if that's changing much or how we're getting that message out. Just, is that something we're talking up at all in the council's government? Well, like I know like in the town of Floyd, town clerk does make sure that each council person gets a copy of the times. And even going to those meetings, she has those copies out. And town of Trent has copies out available to people that come in. Yeah. So they, they'll take that and they'll print it and give a printed version to their, to their board and kind of public. Um, I, I mentioned, I'm not sure so much, but sometimes if there's an article that, I'll take some articles from the Tuck Hill Times for my announcements, but if there's something in there that doesn't relate to every time, I'll mention, you know, this, this edition of the Tuck Hill Times, there's this, you know, you might want to check it out. So we do push it a little bit. I mean, I'm sure we could probably push it more. Would it be a difficult thing to do to, to ask the, uh, the circuit riders to present that at the, the next board meetings and just say, hey, you know, this is a great message, messaging tool for the commission, for the area. There's a lot of good information here. Give me your email address. Yes. 
<laughs> to that point, we do have a, a pretty thir uh, thorough database of all of our local government officials, and we spend a lot of time keeping that up to date because they're constantly turning over. Yeah. Um, so we do have a lot of email addresses, and we're always updating them. Tug Hill Times automatically goes to every supervisor, mayor, planning board chair, zoning board of appeals chair in the region, and then we add anybody else who wants it. We haven't, I mean, we could take all of our email addresses and just dump it to them. I I, I hesitate. I'd rather people opt in, to, but in, and people do opt in all the time. Mm -hmm. We do send everybody in our database headwaters. So that's, you know, the one yeah. once a year and everybody gets that um, either printed or email that's in the database. Um, we could certainly maybe do something to expand and ask to people. Or, yeah, it, you know, it's a, there, there's no cost associated no, with this. Right. And the other thing is, I think it'd be a great thing. Even county governments, oh, yeah. like, like Lewis County, which the majority of the Lewis County is in our district, to make sure that every county legislator is getting that. What they do with it, they could delete it for all I care. But I, I would really like to see that flooded. And I think the. The key to our success here is the circuit riders, <clears throat> because they're, you know, they're on the ground. You know what I mean? And it doesn't take much. Just give me your email address and we're going to yeah. send you something. If you don't like it, delete it. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> but it really, if we, you know, 1,200 to 2,000, I'd like to see that double. It yeah. really would. It's yeah. a great messaging tool. It does go to a lot of um, outside the region people, too. Yeah, a that's, lot that's of great. state people. Mm -hmm. um, we have a function on our website. So if someone lands on our website for whatever reason, there's a, do you want to subscribe to Tug Hill Times? They can click a button. And it, so we it goes to probably two or 300 people that have just asked for that for whatever reason. And I will say like, I emailed it out for Gwen when she was on vacation last time around. And I got a few people emailing, emailing me back saying, thank you, or could you take me off your list? I'm not going to be a councilman anymore. But there, there are people from Long Island that get it because they find that the information is useful. So yeah. um, I send it to my daughter weekly. Yeah. And I said, why don't you just send Katie, yeah. <laughs> send somebody at the commission office your email address. They'll send you up. <laughs> there you go. You pant too. <laughs> It sounds like you think it's a valuable thing. We spend a lot of time every two weeks. <laughs> Putting it together, yeah. It together. I mean, it's got to be a struggle to trying to come up with things every, you know, every uh, yeah. publishing of that. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. everybody has. Yeah. Response to We've done it for a long time. Yeah. Since John's come on board, it's a little more uh, routine than normal. But the circuit, assistant circuit writers get to go to by design, a, a lot of the different municipality meetings so that you become more familiar with who's who, what their function is, uh, engage them in conversation prior to the meeting or afterwards, which is when they seem to have a lot of questions. Sure. And it, it provides the assistant circuit writer with a, with a comfort level, so to speak, uh, where they can just say, oh, hey, by the way. Uh, so uh, that, that helps a lot. You're absolutely right in the capacity. It's, it's, it's free. They're out there anyway, and uh, most of the folks are very accepting of that invitation. Yeah. So, the bigger that pool gets, the more you can talk about, too. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with finance or lack of. <laughs> that would cost us a dime. So, okay. <laughs> Um, we used to, that used to be a print that used to be a print thing many years ago and then yeah. we, were have, we were trying to move people to email and limit the print then COVID happened and we said you know what we're not printing and mailing this anymore it's yep. purely a an electronic um publication and I, I don't think anyone's upset about that anymore there might have been a few holdouts that just don't do email I guess a question you know it's a pdf attached to an email is that working for people because I know there's a lot of other ways that you can do newsletters but if it's working I don't want to yeah pdf works on my phone work yeah. working for people okay works on mine, so. perfect I think it's still standard. standard yeah you see like well, I'll say yeah. the land trust for example you have a it's like built into your email uh kind of newsletter and 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 we could go that way but I I like simple if the pdf works PDS is standard commercial use yeah. for everybody now. I, think that's I don't I don't even get a fax. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a fax machine. I think if you fax me, I don't want to do business with you. Yeah. <laughs> I think that might fax me. Yeah. Any questions about the finance, no. finance report? Good. 
No, we really don't need any action on that, right? No, I just wanted to. Yeah. Okay, good. Do you have anything else on that? No. Public comment. Anyone have anything they want to talk about? The weather, the lack of snow. We talked about snowmobiling earlier. We talked about Tom Boxberger's first snowmobile. I like the lack of snow. <laughs> you got cold too. <laughs> yeah. Well, lack of snow is an economic driver within the area because snowmobiling in your town and other towns in the Gulf Gill is big. So, you know, I got a lot of my employees running around with big crocodile tears because they spent seven, eight, nine thousand dollars in snowmobile. They can't use it. That's, a, that's an inexpensive one, too. Wow. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's 15, 20,000. They're expensive. Sure. Ron Russell's change. snowmobile to get cold. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, too. Just run to uh, ask how things were going with the lightning study. I can uh, share the list. What was that? <laughs> a lot of, I said a lot of flashes. So the big, the big storm um, at the end of November was generated a lot of data for um, SUNY Oswego. Uh, they were very excited. They had they have teams that come from Oklahoma, believe it or not, when they anticipate a big lake effect storm, they fly here and they they send off their weather balloons. They deploy their Doppler on wheels. They're doing their whole thing. Um, they had a very good event and a lot of data during that storm. And there was a second smaller storm that they did get some additional data from. And now it's been nothing for the last couple of weeks. So we really need snow for that too, because you had a million dollars out there and a lot of equipment and it's just waiting to measure um, snow and lightning. I do think there is a webinar coming up a little um, tomorrow, tomorrow that some staff are going to sit in on that um, Scott Steiger from SUNY Oswego is putting on some preliminary kind of what they're seeing so far. Um, I think from what I've read that um, they did see some lightning associated to the wind turbines during the big storm. Um, they were very excited about it. There's a Twitter account that they are sharing their information to and it's above my head. I mean, it's very sciencey and like there's graphs and words that I don't understand, but they're very excited. So I think it's going well. Um, we did help them. So they uh, sent off three of their weather balloons during that big storm. They immediately got two of them uh, found and, and we, we, they reused these, you know, they're expensive. They have a lot of expensive instrumentation on them. But the third one was in a snow, snow bank um, somewhere uh, east of the city of Watertown and they couldn't find it. They went up to try to find it, couldn't find it because they got five feet of snow there. Um, and so our agreement is if they need help, send us the GPS coordinates. We'll use our GIS system to look and see who the property owner is. So they did that. We looked up the property owner, got, got that to Scott. He ended up driving up here, meeting with them. They poked around, couldn't find it. The snow started to recede. The guy, I don't know, they, they've ended up um, you know, locating, it. locating it and they've got it back. Because these they have an instrumentation that sends off a GPS signal yeah. so they can know where it is. Um, so, so far they haven't had to get any tree, at, get them out of any trees that I know of or send in the snowmobiles into the interior of Tug Hill, but, you know, we really would like some more snow. So that's pretty much what I've heard so far, but tomorrow I think there'll be some more yeah. very interesting information. Yeah, this is uh, kind of right on the ball field where you have a, one of the substations. Yeah. Location. Yeah. I have one across the road from my house. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I, when I first seen it, I called the supervisor guys wondering what it was. <laughs> I was thinking maybe somebody from campus to put up a communication channel or something. Like that. But yeah, he said they had it set there. So anybody else? Nothing. <laughs> Mark, welcome. Yeah, no, nothing. All right. We decided because of time that uh, we're going to give all of our councils of government and our circuit riders a break. We're not going to have a council of government report <laughs> today. Uh, last thing I did forget, uh, I did want to say uh, thanks for putting together the uh, continuing saga of the Constable Chronicles. I watched that on the 30th. That was done really well. I enjoyed that. Looking forward to the next one on, uh, which is going to be the 29th, isn't it? What's the next January. one? Which is going to be Snow Ridge. Snow Ridge. Yes. 
Yeah, so Jenin and Taylor take all the credit for the Constable Chronicles. Oh. Taylor, Taylor. Yep. Um, <laughs> they're pointing at each other. Um, and they also have been the ones doing the legwork for Snow Ridge coming up in, at the end of January. And that is going to be a hybrid event. It's on a Sunday. Yep. So you'd really be better off being at Snow Ridge, I think, for it. It'll be much better if you're in the room. There's going to be a panel of presenters. But we are offering it hybrid if people can't travel or whatever. Will um, the bar be open at that day? I would yeah. imagine it would be. <laughs> Okay. And we'll be skiing too. Okay. We'll be skiing and training and then watch the events. I don't know why it was scheduled that way because they are going to be open for business. So we wanted to be sensitive to the events that they had going on. Um, I'm sure you get people who could well, route for the day to just see us. 2 p.m. So that way when it's over, people can go night skiing if they'd like. They, you know, after they do their walk in the history with the uh, technology, they'll get to really enjoy the joys of night skiing because that wasn't always possible. Um, it will be rolled into a 75-ish anniversary for themselves. They're not counting the two years oh. for COVID. So hopefully it'll be pretty busy. And we do have to look out some of the kinks with oh. how we're going to handle attendance, I think. But because there might be some walk-ins too. But good. Good. Thanks. Anything else? I want to wish everybody a happy uh, Christmas, a uh, happy Hanukkah, and uh, hope your uh, 2023 is a uh, great year. Safe New Year's. Safe New Year's. Yeah. And and keep in mind, food is going to be delivered shortly, and so we're going to have lunch here. We're going to rearrange the room a little bit, so everyone is invited to stay for lunch on uh, just some social time. Perfect. Do I have a motion to adjourn? We do. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Bye, Leona. Anna. Thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. That's all right. Feel better. We'll see you in the new year. Okay, I will be. No. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>